things that we use energy for, uh, transportation, home heating, and electricity are primary things we use electricity for, and there are renewable sources for these. So renewable fuels for transportation, have the solar and solar hot water for home heating, and solar tanks and wind for electricity. And today I'm going to concentrate on solar tanks and wind, and um, really home-size photovoltaics and wind for electricity. So that's what we're going to do here today. Why would we want to make electricity from renewable sources? What, what could be our reason? Why would we be thinking about putting a wind turbine or photovoltaic panels on our home? One reason could be that we want to produce carbon and radioactivity-free electricity. Another reason might be that we would like to be independent of the utility company, to have some energy independence and produce our own electricity. Another reason might be that we would like to save money. And I'll tell you now that I, I think I can make arguments for the first two, and the third, the third one, I'm not so sure. So uh, we'll see, see how we do when we get to the end here. So I just want to talk a little bit, hopefully, about what you already know about where our electricity currently comes from. This is a graph from the U.S. Department of Energy. They track our energy use in the United States, and this is the electricity flow, so where it comes from and where it goes to. So in the United States, about 50% of our electricity is produced from burning coal. About 18% is produced from burning natural gas. About 20% comes from heat produced from radioactive processes in nuclear power plants, and about 9% from renewable energy, which is mostly hydroelectric. Um, the first three of these uh, work by heating up water and spinning a turbine, and that ends up with conversion losses with all of this energy going into heat that we dump into our streams and rivers, and then the rest of it goes into the energy of electricity, and then that electricity gets split up between residential electricity, commercial electricity, and industrial electricity at about one-third each. So that's where it comes from and goes to in the United States. In Iowa, our sources are a little bit different. Um, so this is from 1980, 1990, 2000, and 2004. And there are a couple things to notice. One is that our energy use continues to increase as we plug in more devices into the wall. And that our coal use, which is the darkest green here, has also increased significantly since 1980. And 83% about of our electricity comes from coal in Iowa, and then another 10% from nuclear power. Uh, and much smaller amounts from uh, natural gas and petroleum. And actually, no, I think this one is renewable. Renewable is definitely going up in Iowa largely due to large wind farms. So um, here's a coal-fired power plant. This is a picture of the coal-fired power plant that's recently been built in Council Bluffs and came online. And <clears throat> the coal-fired power plant, just like a, a nuclear or a natural gas plant, uses the fuel to boil water, to make steam. The steam goes into the turbine, turns the blades, and turns an electric generator just a coil of wires turning in a magnet, produces electricity, puts the electricity out on the wires. And that electricity comes out through the grid and into our home, through our, through our main panel into the home. So when we talk about the grid, that's just a set of wires that are coming from the power plant into our homes and connected across the country comes in through our utility meter, and that utility me meter is measuring the electricity that's delivered in kilowatt hours. So a 100-watt light bulb uses electricity at a rate of 100 watts or 100 joules per second. That's telling us the rate at which electricity is getting used. It's a very funny unit, I think, a watt, because it, it doesn't include the per second in there, and so we don't think of it as a rate but it is, it's the rate at which we use electricity. And the kilowatt hour is an amount of electricity. So if we leave a 100 watt light bulb on for one hour, 
It uses 100 watt hours or 0.1 kilowatt hours of electricity. How many of you know how many kilowatt hours a month you use in your home of electricity? Okay. Okay, so so when you're thinking about whether you want to install renewable energy or not, install a photovoltaic system, install a wind energy system, that's one of the first things you want to look at is how many kilowatt hours do I use a month? And I'll, I'll come to that in a bit. So um, the electricity that's coming across the grid is alternating current, and this is my, my very basic little picture, uh, trying to picture that. So these little blue dots are supposed to be electrons in a wire, and alternating current has those electrons sloshing back and forth. So that's the electricity that comes from the grid. They slosh back and forth at 60 times per second. That's the 60 hertz for the AC electricity that comes into our house. So the kinds of renewable electricity that I want to talk about today are photovoltaic and wind energy. And when we get electricity from photovoltaics and wind, we must condition the electricity to use them in our household with our normal household appliances. Um, there are certainly special kinds of appliances that you could buy where you wouldn't have to condition the wind, but for most of us, we're not going to go out and buy a, a whole new house of appliances. So we have to condition it. The photovoltaics put out direct current, just like a battery puts out direct current, and an inverter has to be used to convert that direct current to alternating current. Most small wind turbines put out what's called wild AC. That is alternating current, but the frequency is not 60 hertz. The frequency of the current depends on how fast the wind is blowing. And so that has to be regulated into a direct current and then converted back into alternating current. Um, there is a wind turbine that's being displayed out in one of the tents that um, does produce electricity directly at 60 hertz, like, like the large industrial scale, uh, utility scale wind turbines, and it doesn't need an inverter. It can feed that electricity directly into the grid. So there are a variety of, of schemes for using wind turbines. So when, you, when you're thinking about connecting photovoltaics or wind to your home, you have to make a choice about uh, how you want to configure that wind. And so there, there are three main possibilities. One is that your renewable energy system could be grid-tied, and I'll, I'll explain each of these in just a minute. Um, and grid-tied electricity can provide carbon-free and radioactive, radioactivity-free electricity. You could have uh, a system that is not connected to the grid but has batteries, and that would provide you independence from the utilities. Or you could have a system that is tied to the grid and has battery backup, and, and maybe that's the best of both worlds. It depends on your situation and what you're interested in. So here is a schematic of a grid-tied system. So here's our house and the utility grid, and it comes into the house, into the utility meter, um, feeds into the service panel with the breakers in the basement, and connects to all of your appliances. But also connected to that is your renewable energy production system, connected to the inverter, and the inverter is also connected to the service panel. So if your renewable energy system is producing a lot of electricity and you're not using very much, then you use all of the electricity that the renewable energy production system is, is creating. Plus, if you're creating any extra, it could go out onto the grid. And if your utility company allows it, your meter can run backwards. And then at night, when you come home and the sun isn't shining, your renewable energy system is not producing enough electricity for, or any electricity, but you need electricity, then you pull electricity off the grid and your utility meter runs forward. And so during the day, your, your, your meter might run backwards. At night, your meter might run forward. If you have a net metering agreement with your utility company, they might look at the value at the end of the month just like they normally do and say, well, you only used three kilowatt hours total this month instead of 300 or 700. 
um, and we'll just charge you for those three kilowatt hours. Um, they will still charge you a fee for, you know, for measuring it and sending you the bill. And so, so that, that fee doesn't go away, but, but your monthly electricity bill will certainly go down. So that um, is a grid-tied system with a net metering agreement with your utility. So you have, to, you have to have both an interconnection agreement with them to allow you to hook up a power generating system to the grid, and then you have to agree with them also about how they're going to charge you for electricity that you're putting out and electricity that you're taking in. They might require you to have an extra utility meter where they will charge you one rate for the electricity that you buy from them, and then they would pay you a, a different and possibly lower rate for the electricity that you provide to the grid. And that varies by utility company, um, what, the, what they're willing to do. Um, I am willing to take questions in the middle here, so if, if I'm not explaining something, then please raise your hand and I'm happy to clarify. Yeah? If you're putting electricity back into the system, how do you, you know, like, if you have a power outage, how do you prevent that from going back into the system they don't work? Okay, that's a good question. So how could you prevent the power from going back into the system if there's a power outage that could potentially hurt a utility worker who's trying to fix the lines? And um, most inverters only work if they're connected to power. So they sense, so they're, they're created for safety, and they can sense whether there's any power coming in, and they'll turn off when the power goes out. And so this does not provide you, it does definitely, definitely doesn't provide you independence from the utility grid, because you're relying on the utility grid, and it doesn't provide you backup power in case the power goes out. The power goes out even though you can produce your own electricity, you can't with this kind of system, to have it, have it be kind of turnkey where you're not paying attention to it. Right. Any other questions on this configuration? Okay. So another possibility is to be off-grid with batteries. So here's our house, and there's no utility connection. Um, and instead, we have our renewable energy production, and we use it to charge up batteries, and then the batteries connect to the inverter, which come into the service panel and, and power the house. So this does provide independence from the utility grid. Um, you, won't, you won't run out of power uh, unless something happens to, to one of your components. Um, it does add an extra expense with the batteries. And so the advantage of the grid-tied system is you don't have to pay for batteries to store the electricity. You just go back and forth with the grid. Um, this kind of system can be very cost effective if you're building a house out in the middle of nowhere where you would have to um, string lines from the utility company, which can be very expensive. So, so this is a very good alternative to, for a, a remote location. And then you just, so there's no grid, grid connection. Um, so for remote location, you just have to be very careful to size your batteries such that they're going to last through a cloudy period or a, a not windy period. And some people do also connect um, a diesel generator as an extra backup for, for a remote location. A third possibility is to be grid or tied with battery backup, and then you would just use the battery backup in case the utility goes down, um, you would then need to cut yourself off with a, with a switch from the utility. 